just a little sin. Can we say that together? No, you didn't say it. Say it like you, you had it. Just a little sin. That's all it takes to destroy a destiny. A little sin. A wonderful, glorious life will be destroyed. Somebody say just a little sin. Do you know that it was just a little sin of murmuring and complaining that made the Israelites to stay in the wilderness? They stayed in the wilderness for how many years? 40 years. Peace. Peace. They stayed in the wilderness for 40 years because of murmuring and complaining. How many of us here don't murmur and complain when it is necessary and when it's not necessary? Going through the Bible, you will discover that be strong in Jesus' name. You will discover that murmuring and murmurers and complainers are destined for destruction. They die before their time. The Bible said they murmured, they complained, and that was all. The next reaction was that God re reacted. And when God reacted, he told them, he told them, all of you, no problem. Because of what you just said now, he said you will stay in this wilderness. I will personally supervise your burials. It is those your children that will see the place. And they all died except Joshua and Caleb. The rest died. Just a little sin. Gradually, you just begin to discover that we have gotten carried away by prosperity gospel, warfare, deliverance, wisdom, knowledge, powerful teachings. But nobody talks about sin. Nobody talks about heaven again. So much so that the present day church, a wonderful generation before me and you, our eyes, Bible prophecies are being fulfilled. But unfortunately, they don't know the Bible prophecy. They don't know the Bible prophecy. What do they know about Bible prophecy? The Bible had already prophesied that there will be apostasy. The Bible had already warned that during the last days, that the people will have itching ears. And they will raise for themselves pastors who will preach to them what their ears want to hear. What is it? Talk to me. Go, make I goggle, goggle. Make I talk to me. As if it's an entertainment. I thought somebody is hearing me here. Somebody has said that the problem with little sins is that they don't stay little when they manifest. What we call little sin, when it manifests, it's too much little sin. It becomes a heavy sin. It becomes a big scandal. It becomes very destructive. It grows. And it is, that is the reason because they are little. When Satan wants to destroy a destiny, he looks for that little sin that is inside your life. Because it's already there. All he does is to go and activate it. That's the door he uses. It is painful but true to note that we don't call a little sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What we call, to note that what we call a little sin, they have very terrible consequences. They have very destructive, daring consequences. What we call a little sin. In the book of James chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one, he is guilty of all. <laughs> For he that has said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. 
He also said, don't envy. You know, there are big, big sins like adultery, fornication, killing, stealing. Those ones, some of you, you already overgrown it because of your education. Some moral this thing, consciousness, everybody will be careful about it. But you know, the little ones of exploiting people working for you, they are not announced, they are there. Those are the little ones that carry people to hell. And you know the funny thing? Because they are, you hide them very easily. Nobody rebooks you, nobody corrects you. We come into the church, we all look fine. But after the service, nobody will know that in the house, we are Idi Amin, we are Jezebels. People dread to see our faces. When we appear, the children will run under the bed and hide. I thought somebody is hearing me here. Brethren, I want to tell you that it is this little ignored sins that will drag many people to hell. The scripture I read for you in James, I'll say, for whatsoever shall keep, whoever will keep the whole law and do what? And offend the one. <laughs> he is guilty of all. That's why I always tell people, heaven is not an easy road. Whoever told you it is come one, come all, it's not true. Is somebody hearing me here? If we say yes, let them come. Well then, if we allow them, ask them to come, then let them tell, let us tell them the hard truth. If we don't tell them the hard truth, and these days you can no more attempt for the game weddings. When you go for wedding of Christians, born again, churches, you'll be ashamed. How our ladies and girls, they come to the wedding naked, including the bridal. Somebody wants to marry. She has agreed to follow a man. And yet she's showing us all the contours and her nakedness. What kind of madness is this? What have come over the church? And somebody would say, let them just come. Let them. No, it's not true. We are not being sincere. We are not honest. These things have destroyed the power of the church. If it's not affecting you, it's affecting all of us sincerely. Let's stop pretending. I thought somebody is hearing me here. Very important. I don't know whether... I just pray. I thank God such things don't happen here and will never happen here because... I won't be able to be wedding a sister that is half naked. I'm wedding you and I'm looking at your breast. I mean, I'll just collect my wife and go home. Or if my wife is not around, I'll go and look for her and ask somebody else to continue the wedding. I thought somebody is hearing me. Are we sitting together? And when you decide to, that you will not make, do that wedding, the papacy should go back like one priest did somewhere in the club here, and insisted that they should go back until they get well dressed. He is not within them. And you will see some people murmuring and complaining in the church. Those are the candidates of hell. Murmurers and complainers of what they don't know. First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6 and 7. In case you don't know, a can uh, Kura and his group went to hell. They died before their time because they did not have enough respect for authority. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must learn to have respect for considered authority. When that priest said, I am not going to wait them, and he had his reason. Everybody should be able to understand his stance because he is representing God. If you don't, I can give you scriptures. You want? <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 5. I'm not reading that scripture now. Because if I go to read it, it may take me off. But I want to tell you, it's, it is in Deuteronomy chapter 17. And a man, let me read it before I go to Corinthians. And a man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken 
unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God. And unto the judge, even that man shall die. And that shall put away the evil from Israel. Isn't that powerful? I'm asking. Is that not heavy? Very heavy. So when you see some of these things, let's be cautious. Let's stop. The church is not a local place where we continue our local village meeting. It's the house of God. And there are principles and order. And the man that we... No, go back to Corinthians, please. Sorry. I'll finish with that scripture. Your glory is not good. Know you not that a little living, living at the whole lump, a little living, a little fox will spoil the whole vine. Push out, therefore, the old living that you may be, what? A new lump, as you are on living. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for all. A little living, it, living it destroys the whole of the place. Little foxes. They spoil the whole vineyard. yard. Is somebody hearing me here? Before you know it, they will corrupt the system. Gradually, you discover that this ministry, everybody have no nose. Some have complained. Why will I not allow everybody to wear trousers? No. The Bible says that as God said, we should not allow you to wear a male dress. And I should not wear. Imagine if I came here this morning wearing bra. And skirt and blouse with bra inside, pushing my, my, my breast. And then I said to you, Hallelujah. Some of you will just carry your Bible and say that something has come over daddy. And you will go. But we don't say when we see sisters, we are in trousers. It's all of them are hero. You can't see them dressed like that and go into the mosque. It's only the church. Let's call it bad thing a bad thing. Amen. It is these things we grow. The little sins that are hindering the testimony of many Christians. Sin, we are told, is a willful transgression. Listen to this. Because this is also part of the reason why we don't differentiate these things. Definition, problem. When you don't define spiritual warfare properly, you will not be able to understand your warfare will have problem. Sin, they say, is a willful transgression of God's, God's known law. What do I mean? Doing what God forbids. God said, you should not lie. You decide to lie. You should not steal. You decide to steal. That's sin. Because God has already given an instruction and forbidding, don't do this. And this is the commonest definition of sin we know. But I want to tell you that there is another side of this coin. There is another side to this definition. I want to tell you that sin also means failure or refusal to do what God commanded. That's another dimension. God has commanded, go into the world and make disciples of every nation. Is that not so? Is God not a commandment? It's a commandment and you refuse to do that. Many of us are not so winners. Many of us, even like the woman of Samaria, cannot even invite people. We are begging you to tag, tag, ordinary conference, tag other people. We can't do that one. And they don't see it as Sin, I want to inform you today, it is iniquitous. Have you ever sat down and imagined people going to hell? Have you ever, be, have you ever sat down and thought about the fact that there are people waiting for your story, your testimony, and until they hear your testimony, they may not be able to make it. They may never get convinced. Your testimony is for somebody's ears, and the day he will hear your testimony, it will change his life. And you are keeping it. And that can, you don't know that that could be your greatest iniquity before God. Failure to walk in love. God is love. And he said we should love one another. And many of us have chosen to walk in hate. In the church. 
There are brethren you cannot put in the same committee. Why? They don't like themselves. They have decided they can't work together. And they are going to have no. No. You don't know what it means. As a leader, it's been a problem. And you just see two people. They can't. If you put one, they won't come. We were to have a conference here. Powerful conference. We brought money. We traveled with some of our elders. I invited these two particular ministers. Respected in the land. And I met another elder. And I was telling him that these two people have agreed to come. He sighed. And said to me. If this man is, has, is coming. And you put him in the post. I said the other one. He said he won't come. I said, no, that I went, I met him with my elders and we discussed and that he promised us he would come. He told me, you know his statement? He said, let us see. And that man didn't come for the conference. And when he didn't come, I was not comfortable. I had to confront the matter. And he said, it's okay, I'm sorry, just, I will make it up. When you have another program, invite me. I said, it's okay. I have not invited him and I don't have the plan. I don't have the plan. If there will be nobody else to preach, let that message not be preached. Who said? He just confirmed a negative prophecy over his head. The other one came as the man had warned me that if I had known, I would have invited them differently. I said, why? He said, they don't see eye to eye. I say, if you to come and preach and go, another one will come and preach and go. He said, no. He said, I will see. And really, I saw. <laughs> I saw. And you don't think that one is sin? It's heavily iniquitous, brother. Heavily. Failure to keep Sunday holy. Remember the Sabbath day. And do what? Is that a commandment? Huh. So many of us are not here today. Why? They have gone on weekend. They have gone to see their friends. They have gone on visitation. Sunday is the day they go outside to visit people. And they don't see it as iniquity. I told you here that my people in this town quarrel with me from the time I was here as a bachelor over the years. Why? That I refused to come for the village, the, our our family, our town meeting. At a point, they took offense. I kept telling them, it is, if it is Sunday, forget about it, I won't be there. But if you fix it Saturday, any other day, I will come. On a Sunday, they will, they will be coming here. I gave them that deliverance. Room. Some of you were witnesses. And they would be meeting there. Before they would close, I would just walk down and greet them and make sure I send them entertainment and go. I never took part in that meeting. They got tired and packed the meeting to somewhere I don't know it today. You must have your absolutes when it concerns the things of God. Sunday is for, the, is a, is for God. Nothing else. It's not my time of visitation unless I'm going to visit a Christian that I, we need to pray for. She too much is we care. If we don't keep it holy, we have sinned. We have rebelled. That's the right word. Against God's commandments. And a lot of us don't think about it that way. No place. It belongs to God. Leave it for him. Are we sit together? <laughs> I want to tell you that sin is a choice. A choice we make. You can decide to walk in sin. You can decide to walk in righteousness. And I want to say there is no small sin. And there is no big sin. There are sin is sin. That's what the first scripture we read here told us. Let's go to the book of Joshua chapter 7. I want to show you something in Joshua 7. Can somebody read verse 21 to 20, 21 then 24. When I saw among the spoils a good Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wage of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then 
I converted them. Mark the word, they are covetousness. And took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent. And the silver under it. The man speaking is Achan. Go to verse 24 and 25. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters. Look at that. And his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent, including his tent. And all that he had, they are cast and they brought them into the valley of Akko. 25. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them, sons and daughters, with fire. Day after they had stoned them with stones. Look up. Just a little scene of covetousness. So many of us, we complain about other people's sin, but we have the sin of covetousness in our life. That's why God warned, remove the speck in your eye, uh, the log in your eye before you begin to trouble yourself about the speck in somebody's eyes. We have the sin of covetousness. When it concerns money, even as a junior boy, junior brother, when your senior brother shared by tradition and by what? And by biblical laws, the first son has a lion's share in family inheritance. Three of us. But you will see a covetous junior brother, last born sometimes. He will be insisting and wanting every share equal. You need to be born again. When you get born again, you will know that there are, that there are things you need to concede. The Bible says, allow yourself to be what? Defrauded. If you want to go to heaven, allow yourself to be defrauded. But you see some of them, I have seen a lot of them, when you are invited like this, <laughs> and you wouldn't know what to say. Why? You will see some elder that have been compromised. They will pretend as if they don't know what to say. And of course, it's better you don't invite me for such meeting because God has been very faithful to me. He has given me a, a calling as a minister. I have a little authority spiritually. Physically, I am strong. So you will fight me. You will fight me. So it's good to say what others cannot say. You say it. Okay, come on, boy. The way your hand reaches, if your hand touches me, then I will also lose my, I, can, I will discipline you there. Thank God. I, let God help me. Let me be older than you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is somebody hearing me here? You should be able to know that there are things as, a, as Christians, the Bible forbids. And we must begin to deal with them. It may not be a one day thing. But every day, please make progress. Is somebody hearing me? Attitudes are not things you just uproot one day. I must be honest with you. But the point is that when you see a Christian born again for years and a negative attitude is there dragging you to hell, it's unfortunate to say the least. It's unfortunate. A little sin of covetousness. Achan and his whole family Children, they died a horrible death because they had caused Israel to lose in a war. The battle Israel had no reason to lose at all. And everybody was provoked only to discover it is a selfish interest of one man that had tortured the whole nation. And of course, they killed him without any apologies. Acts chapter 5. Let's start from verse 1. It's a story I could have been able to rush and tell you. Because all of you know it. But let's read it. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privileged to it. 
and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. They kept a certain part. Is somebody hearing me? And Peter said, why has Satan filled thy heart? Look up. Everybody look up. Because some of you are from pastors who will tell you that a Christian doesn't need deliverance. After somebody is born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, he can be filled again. With what? With spirit. With demons. Peter was talking to Ananias and Sapphira. Were they born again? Were they baptized in the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost? I'm asking you. And Peter here said to him, why has Satan done what? Feed your heart. That when he was walking on you, the conscience was not touched, not changed. They all agreed. And then, you know the rest of the story. Okay, verse 4. Why it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not also your own? In your power, why hast thou this, conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied, lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing this word, fell down, gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all that had these things. Look up. A little sin of lying, a little sin of deceit. Dead and dead, Ananias died. But you see, if you go to verse 3, no, verse 8 to 11, you will see another dimension. Somebody else died. Who died? The wife. Sapphira. Am I right? Now, why did she die? Is it the same, lie, the same, uh, the same scene of lying? Huh? I don't feel so. Even though lying manifested. The reason is because she came late to church. For some of you that always come late, late comers, you quarrel with, with KK and Taizi drivers. When you arrive here, you meet us now, binding witches and wizards, binding mommy water. You join. No repentance prayer. You weren't there when we did our repentance, sorted ourselves up. And you just come and join the service. Palaba, you define. Why do I say it is lateness? If Ananias and Sapphira were standing together when the husband lied and Peter said, why have Satan filled your heart? You have not lied unto man. You've lied to God. And the wife was watching the husband fall bah, and die. When Peter turned to her and said, Madam, is this what so so and so you saw it? Do you think she would say yes? No, sir. Okay. Now you now see my own why I passed. You also pass, so <laughs> when you say lie, you also passed. But I want to tell you that that woman would have survived if she came early. For some of you, professional latecomers. Yes, they are here. They are even in your church also. They can never arrive when it is time for praise and worship. They will not be there when we will do opening prayer. No. They know when they normally come. They come and then when they, by now it's time for message. Then they stroll in like general overseers. Carry one big Bible like the Ark of the Covenant. Which many times they don't even read. Is somebody hearing me? Are we sit together? Uh -huh. So please, I want to encourage all of us deal with the little sins. Because this thing we call little, their problem can be very heavy. And we sit together. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 26. Somebody give me 14 to 16. Matthew 26. Just a little sin. Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went into one to the chief priest. Can you imagine? Mark, mark the word there. He went. They didn't even call him. He did what? He went to look for breakthrough. <laughs> he went. 
<laughs> That's how many of our ministers went to politicians. Even the ones we have told Muslim politicians, the church had agreed we will not be there. Ministers of God, they went. Some of them coined a special name so that they can go and collect money. Let's be careful about breakthrough. Can I tell all of us? God knows every money is not a good money. Did you hear what I said now? Every money is what? Not a good money. Was it not here? Somebody shared about a, a security officer. Somebody had died somewhere in the West when he was walking there and they had an accident and died. They went to the car and discovered there were hard currencies. They collected this money, shared it. What he got from the money, he used his own and sent one of his sons to U.S. to go and study. The son studied the U.S., made the best result that even the government decided to give him citizenship. Brought him here to come and ask his family that they are now, they can come over to U.S. because the boy was a class. American government came down with him. And when he came here, are you hearing me? The father had lived in the West. He decided to visit his friends in the West. When he got exactly where the father stole the money of a dead man, he had an accident there and died. Every money is not a good money. I have told my workers and I repeat here. Every money is not a good money. We are in a deliverance ministry. There are seeds people sow in my office. Those working with me will know. I ask them to go and put it in the offering box. And what betide you if you are one of those who go to offering box to steal such money? You collect the troubles. Is somebody hearing me here? Every money is not a good money. If you're a minister, it's not every money people saw in tears that you carry to your home. They can be used for the work of the kingdom, not for your personal use. Is somebody listening to me? I like the way you are quiet. And he said unto them, What will you give me? Pride, and I will deliver this man you are looking for unto you. And they covenanted with him. For how many? 30 pieces of silver. Brother, listen to me. He, this man called Judas. How many of you will, after having a child, if your wife deliver now, you give him, give the child a, a name, Judas? Anybody here? Oh, but some people answer Matthew, some answer Paul. Am I right? This man denied himself all those privileges. Subtracted himself from the list of the apostles. Why? Covetousness. Two. He was a deceitful follower. He was a betrayer. Listen to me. What I come. I am going somewhere. Let's go to it. I allow this man to follow me. I say the way he's following me now. Please. It's not just that he's my assistant or PA. But I allowed him to be following me while I'm not looking back. On trust. What did I say? On trust. Otherwise, I will ask him to be walking by my side. Because our people say that a man who cut human head we never allow anybody to carry knife and follow him behind. True or false? Huh? Okay. And when somebody allow you to follow him on trust, tell you things in confidence, whether you are quarreling or you are no more friends, learn to keep those secrets secret. Otherwise, you kill yourself before your time. Because the spirit of a man is also strong. 
And when you wound somebody's spirit, his spirit can raise a cry that can dismantle your life. I thought somebody is hearing me here. We must learn to avoid being traitors. Judas was a traitor. Can you imagine? He was looking for a breakthrough with the life of his master. And the result is that he sold his master because of 30 pieces of silver. He betrayed us. He made a merchandise of the privilege. Don't tread that kind of life. He doesn't pay. And like I always tell people, all Absaloms, all Judases, they will always die before the man be betrayed. Go and read your Bible. All of them. Study the word of God. And the same thing in life. They betrayed, he betrayed Jesus. Who died before each other? <laughs> he died before Jesus. Disgraceful death. The money he no chop himself. No chop up. Are we sit together? There is another dimension. Let's go to Numbers 20. Somebody say, just a little sin. In the book of Numbers chapter 20, look at verse 7 to 13. <laughs> I like this one. We need to pay attention. There are many things here, even though I don't know whether time will allow me. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thy rod, and gather thou the assembly together. Thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak, speak unto the rock before their eyes. And he shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rod. And he said unto them, Hear now, you rebels. You must we fetch water out of the rock. And Moses lifted up his hand. And with the rod, he smote the rock twice. And the water came out. Abundantly. The congregation drank, and the abyss also. <laughs> and the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron, Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I gave, I have given them. Uh, even as I promise you, you are sacked. This is the water of Maribel, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord. And he was sanctified in them. You can leave the rest and look up. I will see it together. <laughs> A little sin of anger. What did I say? Why this one bothers me? In the whole of this Bible, except Jesus, is there anybody that is as anointed as Moses? Huh? Is there anybody that was close to God as Moses? Whatever the gift and the grace of God in your life or whatever amount of money you give, be careful. What did I say? Be careful. Just be careful. He said God will change his word. He changes a man. With all the anointing of Moses, with all the relationship between God and Moses, God said, no more. You know, because, and don't forget to, something led to this thing. If you read the thing from the beginning, they rebelled. They cheated Moses. They provoked him. Our problem is our members. So, you, looking at me now, looking holy, you are the trouble of many ministers. When they sinned, Moses went to God. Cried to God. 40 days and 40 nights. 
God forgive them. Moses seen once now. None of them prayed. He said they went to pray. They went to play. They drank their water and went. They went. To them, nothing happened. In fact, they were not interested. Ah, it's Moses' trouble. Yeah, she let him solve his problem there. It's a bad story. And that's why none of them married to this widow. Because they were too self-centered. They were too selfish. They were too committed and attached to modern things. They were too carnally minded that spirituality was lacking in their brain. I thought somebody is hearing me here. We must not, the Bible said this is a written for our instruction so that we can learn from their mistakes. A little sin of anger. We need to be careful. Have you ever read the book of Kings? When most even, what's his name? Elijah. Is that not another great prophet? Huh? A little scene of frustration. Weariness. When you are weary, be careful. When you are, being, you are looking frustrated, be careful. The Bible says, Elijah spoke and spoke carelessly and said, I am not qualified. I am what? Can you ask how was Elijah? I'm not better than any of my fathers, but that's not true. And he said to God, It's better than you. I mean, I'm tired of this life. <laughs> Take away this thing from me. He said, talked carelessly. And God said to him, Number one, Elijah, I have 7,000 people in this country that have not bowed to bow. So don't think you are the only one. 7,000! Not 700, not 70. And that was not the all. He said, meanwhile, because of the way you talked, that careless talk, you are out of the job. When you live here now, anoint Elijah, Elisha, in your room. Go and mark that word. Anoint Elijah in your position. What does that mean? You are no more there. Start coming back home. Somebody say a little sin. A little sin. I like the way your voices are going lower. You are a good audience. It's sinking. It means we are repenting. I don't have time anymore. But there are a lot of things to tell all of us, to share with you. How about Genesis chapter 19? Just let's have 17 and verse. Genesis 19, verse 17. And verse 26. <laughs> hey, this one. Somebody say a little sin. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Mark the word there. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain. Least thou be consumed. The instruction was clear. Graphic. 26. And Lord. That's not 26 brother. 26. 26. But. His wife. Looked back. From behind. And she became what? <laughs> Whoever put his hand upon the plow. And look it back. It's not qualified for the kingdom. It's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven. And there are many rivers to cross. And that was all. A little sin of disobedience. Some of us are terribly rebellious. Naturally disobedient from the nature. And you think it is not the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because we want to control ourselves. We want to rule ourselves. We don't want anybody. You know, the demon is worse now in the end time. The greatest demon of the last days, the spirit of the Antichrist. When you see a child or a man or a woman 
that cannot be under authority, cannot subject himself to authority. You have seen somebody that Antichrist is ruling. They don't, they believe, even the small one, they believe they know where they are going, they know how they get there, so they don't want an advice. One second, one second disobedience by Lot, she died without repentance. She, was not, she didn't even have an opportunity to say, Lord, I'm sorry. <sighs> she, had, she ended in hell. One minute, one second disobedience. Brethren, the sin of disobedience and the sin of stubbornness, rebellion, idolatry, they are the same. Witchcraft, all of you are in the same class under God. And as long as you live this life, you won't understand why you cannot conquer the witches and wizards. You can't conquer the enemies outside. You need to conquer the enemy within so that you can conquer the enemy without. I thought somebody's listening. We must obey the word of the Lord. Obey them that have rule over you as people that will give account. All authority is from God. The devil is an accuser of the brethren. Are we sitting together? Please. Please. This stubbornness I see in the church these days, it is there in high and low places. You see rebellion. That is the spirit of the last days. And listen to me. It's the spirit of the Antichrist. If God could not accept it from Satan, he cannot accept it in man. I asked them, I was preaching in Abba, and I came to this, I asked them a question. I said to the ministers, I said to them, some of you here, as ministers, you are finding it difficult to even submit, and beyond that, you are, you are seniors. You give me many reasons why you are rebels. I said, never you think God will approve your actions. Why? If God could not accept it from Lucifer, Satan, and, the dim, and half of the one third of the angelicals rebelled. Is that not a big crowd? One third. That's about how many percent? 33? One third. Am I right? God did not consider their crowd. He didn't consider their population. He didn't consider the event, what he invested inside them. The Bible said he threw them out. He, didn't, he threw them out. If that is what God did, the Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. He has not changed. He's the same God. All we need to do is to do what? Amend our ways. Amend our ways. And I thank God for the man of God in that place. He shared one message, I think it was the last day before my last message. <laughs> the little foxes that spoil the vine. Let's deal with these little foxes. The little sins. One second. <clears throat> That's all. Though. And Lord was lost. If I tell you certain, if I were allowed to say certain things and mention name, I mention action. Some of us here will be cojard. Why? Disobedience, rebellion, stubbornness. It's so terrible in the church. And you know the painful thing, they speak in tongue with it. Let's deal with the sin inside. Satan has not died. His ministry, he is still the accuser of the brethren. The church is not a social club. If you are coming to church because you want to go to heaven, brethren, let's obey God. Otherwise, join people's club. Find there are many social clubs. That are wonderful. 
the Rotary Club is there. Some of them now are more evish. They show more love than Christians. Is somebody hearing me here? Yeah. So let's change. Because so many of us are, we are the little living that is spoiling the vine. Because others are copying our behaviors and attitudes. And the Bible says you give account. Because what you sow, you reap. Touch your neighbor and say, are you hearing? I want to close. Maybe next week if I have time, maybe I can continue with it. Just a little sin. Do you know why uh, Eli, open your Bible. Can you give me First Samuel chapter three. First Samuel chapter three. Look at verse twelve to fourteen. Let's read that one. We can close with it. And in that day, I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house. God is talking to Samuel. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. <laughs> and therefore, I have sworn unto the house of Eli. Mark the word there. I have sworn that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. A little sin of negligence. A little sin. Brethren, look up. If you are a leader in the church, if you are a father in the house, if you are a father in the village, if you are an elder in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, know your role and your responsibility before the children, before the house of God, before the women, before the youth, before the people you are asked to oversee. No sentiment in the work of God. Declare the truth. And that's what will sell you free. Be, it can be hard. Even what I'm preaching now, everybody here now is not happy with me. No, that's the truth. If I think all of you are happy, I'll be lying. Some of you are already getting hot. Some are even wearing their binoculars so that they can scrutinize my own life. Go ahead. More grace. But listen to me. Your blood will never be found in my hand. Why? I will tell you the whole truth. And the Bible said, if I finish telling you the truth, I have saved my soul. Your blood now will be on your head. That's what the Bible says. Am I right? So please, if you know what you are supposed to, when you see your children, some of them are not up you, a woman has a beautiful girl that is already, you yourself know you are beautiful and your daughter very beautiful, superlatively with wonderful figure and that child is not up to five years if a child you should give by a give, you give on a young man, this is conscious in my car, on a car you are the one destroying the child you are in a tundra here and people will buy and believe you me, the price they will give her, she will never be able to reject it. And God said, he will hold you responsible. Because you know. And before you know it, some of them will overgrow you. Yeah, because the present generation is not like our generation. Where we are told things and we just obey them without question. But these ones, when you tell them to do things, they ask you, why must we do that? They ask you why. And you have a you fail to give them reason. Even if you like flex muscles, they keep quiet. They are waiting for you. 
when he's 17, 18 years, he knows he's, you can't fight him again. If you talk, he will just, if he respects you, he will just frown and walk out. And when you're walking out, he'll be waiting for you to touch him so that you have enough reason to slap you back. Is somebody listening to me here? So let's control this thing now. Stop corrupting the children. And you say you don't know what you are doing. What kind of madness? I was taking to a sister. I said, sister, I said, you know you are beautiful. Say yes. I said, please, do you want, do you want to get married now at this age? She said, no. I said, you don't want to get married now? I said, why not keep some of your charms so that we will allow you to get to where you are going? If the pressure from all the men you are inviting, if they come, I say, will you be able to risk, carry it? It's a hard talk. Very hard truth. I say, can you be able to withstand it? I say, how much have you seen? If somebody agrees to say he will pay 500,000 into your account, well, I say, your heart will spin. All that's ordinary, what do you call it? iPhone is destroying their destiny and their life. Let's be careful. Teach these children that godliness with contentment is a great gain. So many of us, we come to church, we make no effort to make our children make disciples. We have youth, we have children's class, we have teenagers' class, we have wonderful teachers there. If there is nobody I know, peace is a wonderful teacher. Go and let peace cancel you. You will look like a small boy or a small girl. The girl has the wisdom of the elders. I told her that I'm praying for a minister of God that will marry her, that she'll make good. She'll be a wonderful minister's wife. Is somebody hearing me here? Yeah, you can clap. But don't bewitch the matter. Because if you bewitch it, I will judge you there. Is somebody hearing me here? Uh -huh. But listen, they will send them to the youth, the teenagers program. They will send their children there. At the end of the day, they keep them in the house watching cartoons from homosexuals and hello, whatever they call themselves. Go and check. The other day, they went, what did they call it? Disney or whatever they call themselves. One of the group was saying that they have introduced, am I Disney? Good, that they have introduced uh, uh, gay, whatever, whatever, and all that. Transgender. Yes, somebody watched it. And so on. And our children are just consuming the thing every day. My brother, let's be wise. The days are not normal days. Let's change. Let's know that the destinies of these children, they are committed into our hands. God was angry. What? Anywhere God has positioned you, he kept you there for a purpose. And on trust, you are sinning against God and his kingdom. If you don't use it, it could be bringing up those children. You have a responsibility. All of them around me, I am hard. They may not like it, but then I don't have a choice. And that's what you should do. And please, don't love some and hate some. I thought somebody is hearing me here. Don't love some and hate some. You have a responsibility to give everybody justice as a leader. Without prejudice. Not by us. Yes, there are some that are close to you. But they should know that you, when they are close to you, to whom much is given, much is expected. So they have to be better. They must not, be, they must not blackmail you. So they should do better than others. And when they don't do, you frown more on them. Am I talking to somebody here? Eli and the whole of his house, they died. And we are wasted in one day because of a little sin of negligence. Negligence. We must not be careless about it. Physically, spiritually. Even the maid in your house, make sure they attend fellowship. If when you are coming here, somebody must be in your house, please arrange for them to attend either charismatic or infac or a scripture union. Let them have another one when you'll be in the house. They will attend. 
Did I communicate? Because the only thing the children fear is the word of God inside them. Without the word of God in a man, human beings are animals. Bow your head and let us pray. I want you to begin to talk to God concerning those little sins. Little sins of criticisms. Little sins of gossip. Little sin of party spirit. Little sin of inordinate ambition. Some of us are always struggling for popularity. The little sins. Little sins of bitterness and unforgiveness. Little sins of lying. Withholding people's wages. People have worked for us. Let's pay them. The little sins of worldliness. The little sin of gluttony. You can't fast. The little sin of always struggling to promote yourself. Allow God. He's the one that lifts up and brings it down. The little sin of criticisms. Many critics are very bad leaders. Take it easy with people. The little sin of envy. Deal with it. Lack of commitment. No zeal for the work of God. That little sin. Tell God, today I change. The little sin of failure to preach the word of God. Failure to invite people to our fellowship. Can't even tell them, come. There is a place I want you to go with me. If you can't sell our meeting, then you are not a disciple. The little sin of deceit. The little sin of hypocrisy. The little sin of haughtiness, arrogance, pride. Jealousy. Please, talk to God about it. In the name of Jesus. Father, we accept that we have not been living our life the way you, would, you desire. Lord, today we have heard your word and we ask you to please help us that we may change. Holy Spirit of God, take hold of us. Convict and convince us of the sinfulness of our sins and let these things we have watered and massaged Give us a deep hatred for those our little sins. And please, by your spirit, uproot them from our lives. And help us to accept that holiness is your non-negotiable requirement for all of us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.